good morning to all of you so uh, we are now discussing about the abinsu methods and most simplest abinsu method is the hartree-fock method that we have started the discussion here so in the last class we have uh, said about the hartree-fock assumption that uh, we have assumed that now electrons can move independently and only uh, one a single electrons will face uh, the repulsion of an average cloud created by all other electrons so and electron wave function uh, were expressed using the Hartree product that is means that if you have n electron wave function so that is actually the product of the n one electron wave function okay so uh, and lastly we have seen that this method has a serious drawback that because that uh, it uh, cannot able to uh, consider the spin uh, of the electrons so the Pauli anti-symmetry principle will not be applicable in Hartree product okay so uh, this uh, drawbacks were actually uh, solved by John Slater using the Slater determinant so uh, in Hartree wave function uh, you have seen that it's a product of one electron functions that we said we said orbitals or more precisely special orbitals because spin is not yet considered but the Slater wave function is composed not just of special orbitals but also spin orbitals. So spin orbital uh, psi spin <coughs> is the product of a special orbital and a spin function alpha or beta. So we can express that psi uh, spin alpha means psi special into alpha or psi xyz into alpha or psi spin beta is equal to means psi special into beta means psi xyz into beta. So, uh, the function psi special is the variable of the uh, special coordinates that is x, y, z and the spin function, uh, so the spin functions alpha and beta have their variable a uh, spin coordinate, okay. So, now the Slater wave function uh, includes the spin orbitals rather than just special orbitals and it is not a simple product but also it can be expressed as a determinant. So to construct a Slater wave function that is Slater determined for a closed shell species we use each of the occupied special orbital to uh, make two spin orbitals. So in a uh, special uh, same uh, orbitals like all your uh, principal quantum number azimuthal and uh, magnetic quantum number same means all the uh, special uh, things are same only spins are different. So uh, one uh, special orbitals can be divided by two uh, spin orbitals. You can also understand this in another context that in one orbital there are two electrons and two electrons are one is uh, either alpha or if one is alpha spin then another was beta spin. Okay. So uh, <coughs> one special orbital is actually uh, uh, considered two uh, spin orbitals alpha and beta. So the spin orbitals are then filled with the available electrons. So now let's uh, form the Slater determinants. Uh, let's assume that we have a uh, we have four electron closed shell species means they are all the electrons are paired. So now how can you make uh, the determinant like this uh, two are uh, now special orbitals uh, a total or spin orbitals. <coughs> so this can be uh, the multiplication. This can be actually uh, the composition of two uh, orbitals. One is psi 1 alpha another is psi 1 beta because this is up up, up, up uh, upward spin this is downward spin so same way this also will be composition of two uh, one is psi 2 alpha and psi 2 beta so the in the, both the cases special orbitals are same for uh, this row this is psi 1 special orbital that is same only alpha and beta spin are still different here also this is spin are different now now how can we express this uh, as a uh, determinant so we can make uh, some rows so let's consider one by one so for a first electron let's assume that uh, it can stay in anywhere so we can uh, it can make the combination like psi 1 1 alpha 1 psi 1 1 beta 1 psi 2 1 alpha 1 psi 2 1 beta 1 so this uh, one uh, can be uh, this is can be one row now for electron 2 we can consider like that psi uh, 1 2 alpha 2 psi uh, 1 2 beta 2 psi 2 2 alpha 2 psi 2 2 beta 2 so that will make your uh, row 2 okay 
so in this way electron can also be uh, staying in anywhere so we can uh, write that psi 1 uh, 3 alpha 3 psi 1 3 beta 3 and uh, psi 2 3 alpha 3 and psi 2 3 beta 3 same way you can write the 4 also that psi 1 4 alpha 4 psi 1 4 beta 4 psi 2 4 alpha 4 psi 2 4 beta 4 so we can make now uh, e one row phi for uh, one electron okay so electrons actually uh, one is then is assigned to that all four spin orbitals of the first row in a sense that it's allowed to roam uh, among uh, these four spin orbitals okay so uh, electron one or electron two both all are actually uh, have freedom to uh, 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 roam around all these spin orbitals so we have now two row uh, four rows now if we make uh, all this in a form of determinant uh, then uh, how we can write that uh, this is psi is equal to 1 by root over 4 and it is in the form of determinant and this 1 by uh, factorial uh, root factorial 4 is nothing but the normalization constant of this wave function. Now we got the slater determinant for a closed cell species where two uh, four electrons are available. So now uh, if you have four electrons then you are getting four uh, total four into four uh, determinants. So if you have uh, total uh, 2n electrons then it will your uh, slater determinant will be 2n into 2n uh, determinant because each uh, sorry. so uh, now we have to uh, look for the things that this uh, wave function uh, in the form of slater determinant <laughs> In the slater this wave function uh, found in the slater determinant obeys the anti-symmetric principle or Pauli exclusion principle okay so you uh, know the characteristics of determinant that if we uh, interchange row uh, two rows to each other then what we'll get we'll get a different determinants with opposite sign okay so this slater determinant ensures by this way that there are uh, no more than two electrons in each special orbital can occupy. So since for each uh, special orbital we have only one row, so if there are two, uh, for since for each special orbital there are only two one electron uh, spin functions are possible, and it ensures that psi is anti-symmetric. So if you switch the electrons, then your uh, uh, this row will be interchanged. This means that it will be uh, it will change the sign. So this means that this is anti-symmetric. Now Pauli exclusion principle, how it can be Pauli exclusion principle will be valid in this case. So uh, Slater may enforce the Pauli exclusion principle, which uh, forbids any two electrons in a uh, system have all four quantum numbers are same. So if you uh, take all your a and l, m l, and psi, uh, all quantum numbers are same. Then what will happen? Then spin quantum number ms uh, of alpha and beta also same for any uh, for any two electrons. So then what will happen? These two uh, rows will be identical in one determinant. So if two rows are identical, then what will happen? Your electron determinant will be value will be zero. So a function will vanish. Okay. So in this way, uh, Slater uh, actually very uh, cleverly incorporated the anti-symmetry and the spin uh, using the in the wave function okay so now uh, how we can calculate the energy uh, so our wave functions are ready now using the slater determinant and the hamiltonian for the hartree-fock uh, method was uh, already uh, we have uh, shown so now we can put this in the x value of this expectation uh, value expectation uh, uh, expression then we can get the energy okay so energy uh, now this psi uh, will be your gas wave function for the first case is like that so then your energy will be uh, higher than the true wave function so you have to minimize this energy using the variational principle okay so integrations is with respect to three uh, this integrations will be with respect to three special orbital uh, special coordinates of the special orbital and also to spin orbital 
okay so total d tau will be equal, uh, equals to dx dy dz into d tau and to d uh, g tau okay so for a 2n two 2n in, two in electron system this integral actually will be 4 into 2n fold integral uh, having its four set of coordinates so calculating the atomic or molecular energy uh, again we can say that our equation 10 uh, in equation sorry in equation 10 if uh, this psi is normalized then we can use this expression so now if we express this uh, psi by a slater determinant and uh, we can get the explicit expression to the total uh, energy expression okay so we can write the hamiltonian for a molecule uh, for the helium atom that was we have uh, earlier discussed that there are in electron uh, kinetic energy this is electron nuclear uh, attractive attraction energy and this is the electron nuclear repulsion so just like this hamiltonian uh, in equation uh, 11 we can uh, compose uh, uh, any of the other uh, hamiltonian in like this way so this is actually electronic hamiltonian again i am saying if you uh, you have to get the energy from this electronic hamiltonian that is called electronic energy and then when you add with this electron uh, nuclear nuclear repulsion energy you will get the total energy okay so how we can minimize this uh, energy so uh, after replacing a hamiltonian and psi in equation uh, 9 means uh, in these equations uh, or these equations if it's normalized uh, then uh, we get the energy of the system uh, followed by minimization using variational method okay you know that variational method uh, we can uh, minimize or the refine the energy and the lower the energy uh, we say that better the wave function because it cannot uh, go beyond uh, the true energy values okay so the hartree scf method works as exactly same iterative manner like hartree product what we have discussed so both are almost same here also refinement is going on here in the Hartree product also we have seen there is a refinement in step by step but there are uh, one difference is that in the Hartree product we uh, have not included uh, the spin functions only special uh, interaction special uh, orbitals are there so that actually uh, formed only the Coulomb integral in Hartree Fock a Hartree method but in hartree fock SCM method, we get Coulomb integral as well as exchange integral because uh, there are uh, now uh, electron spins are included. So, electron can be exchanged in different spin orbitals. Okay. So, because K uh, acts as a kind of Pauli corrections to the classical electrostatic repulsion, uh, remaining the all uh, the other electrons uh, to uh, same spin cannot occupy the same orbital. So, electron-electron repulsion is less in case of hartree fock SCF. Why? Because uh, here we are explicitly considering uh, the other electrons. Uh, sorry, it is not like that. So, uh, as K here improved the Pauli correction also, this means that there, uh, spin, uh, there will be uh, different spins for two electrons also. So, you will get less uh, repulsion in case of uh, Hartree Fog SCF rather than Hartree product. Okay. So, thank you very much.